Hi, welcome back to week six, the last week of the course. And although we'll be talking a lot about plant biotechnology and other challenges that may have moral implications in the last week of the course, we're actually back at the Allagash Brewery for, to, to talk with brewmaster Jason Perkins about an uh, ancient type of biotechnology which uh, Allagash is using in remarkable ways. And we're here in a room that you don't usually see in a brewery when you tour a brewery. Could you tell us a little bit about what happens in this room, Jason? Sure can, yeah. This is uh, uh, what we call our wild barrel room. What happens here is we utilize lots of other types of yeast and bacteria beyond what we call Saccharomyces brewer's yeast. And so we do a fair amount of souring in barrels in this space using lactobacillus, pediococcus, etc. All of the beer that's stored in this room is stored in, in oak barrels, which are basically a porous, semi-porous vessel that allows air to kind of move in and out. The microbes that we're using in this space to create flavors like this porous vessel as, as an aging vessel. The oxygen that gets ingress into the barrel can help those organisms survive and create the flavors we want. So there's a variety of stuff that's happening in this room. Some of the beers are fully fermented, so the consumption of sugars, and then aged in here. Sometimes we add beer to these barrels after they've already been fermented. Mm -hmm. And in that case, we're looking for uh, added flavor development and uh, development of acidity from lactic acid bacteria. So it's a very different process than most beer is produced out there. It certainly looks a little bit like a winery in here and a lot of these barrels are old wine barrels. But it's the development of some acidity and some unique flavor com compounds over the long period of time that, it, that happens in this space. The big function in this room is for the fermentation and aging of our cool ship beers which are beers that are produced using a very old technique of utilizing a large cooling vessel, open air, to cool the wort after the brewing process. Typically, 99.9% .9 of the breweries in the world are adding a cultured yeast strain to, to the wort after the brewing process. In the production of cool ship beers, instead, we're allowing it to cool naturally from straight boiling temperature down to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit and allowing natural microflora of the area to inoculate the wort. And that can be a, a real wide variety of wild yeast, Britannomyces, and lactic acid bacteria. The wort will then come into barrels and live here for two to three years for a fermentation and aging process. So it's a very long, very unique process. So the yeasts that you're using are actually airborne yeasts Correct. that are native to the area. Yep. So anything that is produced in the cool ship process is going to be very, very tied to this particular area, this particular bit of land. Is yes, there, absolutely. Is and there a flavor profile <laughs> associated with that? It's a very unique flavor profile, absolutely. You know, like I said, it does have a little bit of a sour character to it, uh, which is, you know, intentional for the style. So the beers are very, very dry. The wild yeasts that are there are very attenuative, which means they can consume sugars that other yeasts cannot. So the beer ends up being very dry. The acidity comes from the lactic acid bacteria. So it's a very unique profile. And it's not only unique to this area, it's also unique to time of year. And we're very specific about the time of year in which we, we make these beers. We only make them for about a six week period of time in the uh, late fall, early winter, and then again in the springtime. Are there yeasts associated with those particular times of year that you want to, to work with, with the wort? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and, to, and just a simple way to describe it would be that the, the yeast that we and bacteria that we want to do the work the primary, the, the bulk of the work of fermentation and, and flavor development are active uh, in those certain periods of time. They're also active in some of the warmer weather, but so is some other stuff ah, that I produces um, some off flavors that we don't. That don't so this enjoy. window of opportunity is in essence a selection process on Correct. your part, where you're selecting various yeasts for their characters that will appear in the beer Absolutely. Later, later on. And, and, and these beers must be unique in terms of their flavor profile and must, much sought after. They are quite sought after. I mean, we're making them in pretty small quantities, and we only are able to, to make enough just to sell here at the brewery only, and we release them about three or four times a year, and they're typically gone in a couple days. It, it kind of just works with what we've always done here. We're making all Belgian-style beers here, which is a, a certain type of tradition of brewing. These type of beers come from that tradition. They're 
outside of our area, the ones that come from uh, Belgium are referred to as Lambic beers. Mm -hmm. We choose not to call them that, um, but it's the same style of beer. They're a big part of who we are and what people know us for. Now, do you ever take a yeast strain from a cool ship beer that has been particularly popular and try to culture it for later use in other batches? We have not at this point done that, no. Uh, we keep, we've kept that kind of series of beers very natural, very uh, much, you know, we don't add any other additional yeast at any point in the process, even for the re-fermentation process in the bottles themselves. We even go so far when we add fruit to some of these beers, which we do down the line, they are always fruit that are grown within, you know, within 50 miles or so of the brewery. So it's, we kind of preserve that as its own little thing. But it's certainly something we could do. We could select one of those yeasts um, and use it in some other beers. We just haven't yet. Well, we're very fortunate to be in the Portland area where we get to taste some of the Cool Ship beers as they become available to us. And uh, I wish more of our students were in this area so they would get the chance to do so as well. It is a real treat. So this week in the class, what we're going to be doing is looking at much more manipulated organisms than the wild yeast that Jason has been describing for the cool ship. We're going to be looking at some of the challenges that these engineered organisms present, both for consumption in the world market and for people who think about the ethics of manipulating life forms in ways different from the traditional ways that Jason has described throughout this course. But this is the last time we're going to be at Allagash and the last time we're going to be talking with uh, Jason Perkins. So thank you so very much Absolutely. for this unique window into a process that is as ancient as human history, but as modern as the next batch of Cool Ship. Mm -hmm.